long trips from different directions. Yeah. It must have been fun for you. How long of a drive was it for you? Two hours. Yeah, we're at some season we're all on a long, yeah. long drive. Yeah, I'm a uh, text acquisitions manager at the University Bookstore down in Romeoville. And uh, the Stevenson is always interesting. Yeah. A um, couple of things from the date book. I have been recruited. This one is called Forget It by Brian Looney. Better to be forgotten than trampled. Trampled leaves a horrible imprint. Trampled leaves a memory and a stain, whereas forgotten leaves one room for wonder, for a thousand what-ifs, and they fill up idle spaces. The forgotten can always be resurrected, reconnected, fixed, but the trampled bear their hoof prints clad with dust. Better to be forgotten or even ignored, for the trampled lick their scars and tremble. And that is from the Scars Publications 2014 date book. That's actually called Don't Forget It. So those are some yeah. from the magazines. And it really is from the date book. I didn't yeah. lie. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, don't look at my calendar. <laughs> no, I, I won't. I don't even I don't even look at mine. Um, piece by Travis Green called Across the Grassland. The ocean whooshes beyond the sunset, half visible, clung to these drowning walls. As I look across the grassland, galloping horses, losing eternity into the silent sky. I feel their pain and hear the cry of the waves, their whisper close to my ears, trembling heartbeat, drawing to their dimension, Embracing shadowed landscapes. And last from the date book, fittingly enough, The Last Sunset by Hannah Haas. If I cry, will he think less of me? I asked myself, just about ready to give in. No, I can't do this. I have to be strong. My dark brown hair was blowing gracefully in the gentle wind as I stared deeply into his eyes. I knew that I didn't have the strength or courage to tell him goodbye, so instead I whispered, see you soon. Trying to disguise my expression, I smiled, acting as if I wasn't worried. I'm so proud of you. Then, too suddenly, the love of my life walked away toward the sunset, leaving to join the army. We both thought it was going to be temporary, but I hadn't realized it then that he would never return. <clears throat> Anybody wants to read her calendar before I give it back to her, just you know, <clears throat> pay me well, risk my life. Uh, do a couple pieces of flash fiction. Uh, this one's called Alice's Ashes. Alice didn't really think about him that often anymore. A dozen years going by had taken the urgency of her memories with them. Even when the occasional errand took her near what had been their neighborhood, she seldom felt the urge to drive by where they'd lived. And when she did have to decide to swing by or not, well, it just didn't seem, the worth, just didn't seem worth the time or effort. The unfailing exception came on nights when she closed the store where she worked. Counting the money at the end of the evening, she thought of him. To be honest, it was only while counting the loose coin, never the paper, and then only the dimes, not the quarters or nickels nor the pennies. Only the dimes, a 20 cent pair at a time, 20, 40, 60, 80, one, while the free part of her mind sang, my name is Jan Janssen, I come from Wisconsin, I work in the lumber mill there. And a corner of her heart thought about his lips as he sang with her, as they sat in the sunroom of her mother's house and sang with the recording of Carl Sandburg's singing. And then the dimes were all counted, and she forgot again. 
once in a while, once or twice in a couple of years perhaps, she thought maybe she should try to find him, to see how he was, nothing more. At those moments, it seemed wrong to have lost touch. It wasn't as if they'd fought at the end, parting as mortal enemies who would one day have forgotten everything but the hurt and some sundered lover's dementia. They simply drifted apart, <clears throat> the way friends do when life stops changing and there's nothing much to say, so why even bother? <laughs> Driving home from work late one night, she passed an apartment complex, a dozen almost barrack-looking buildings set back from the street across a few low, rolling hills. In the parking lot by the second building were fire trucks, two ambulances. Police cars seemed to be everywhere, with their rooftop lights flashing blue in counterpoint to the red of the emergency vehicles. People had gathered in small groups on the opposite side of the trucks and ambulances and cruisers from the building, some gesturing, some seeming to talk, some just watching the flames, waiting passively for something more to happen. Alice wondered what was going on and thought about it all the way home, through getting the mail and greeting the dog, finally turning on the television to see if there was any news about what she'd seen. There wasn't, and in the morning she overslept. The apartment complex was quiet when she passed, and she didn't take the time to buy a newspaper. Uh, a little bit macabre in a different sort of way. This is about the importance of manners. There never seems to be the time for politeness. You know that kid at the convenience store who calls you dude? The waitress who thinks she's doing you a favor by doing her job? No matter what we ourselves do for a living, we've all had rude people get in our faces and hurl a mixture of profanity and angry spittle. Let's not even talk about the fools we share the highway with, okay? <laughs> They're everywhere. They outnumber us. I decided to do something about it, to teach people that being polite is the main thing in life. I faced rude people down. In no uncertain terms, I told the mechanic who worked on my car that he lacked what my doctor calls people skills. <laughs> I took the same tack with the girl at Burger Bar with her body piercings, rainbow hair, and attitude. When I forced that old couple off the road and told them they were endangering other drivers, they knew they had to change their ways. <laughs> it helped, but not enough. The ranks of the impolite seemed to swell. I suspect some, maybe many of those I tried to teach, laughed behind my back and reverted to their old ways. There had to be a better way. The kid from the convenience store was first. When he got off work just after midnight, I took him around the back of the building and told him how rude he'd been. On his knees, with a little prompting, he apologized from the bottom of his soul and promised it would never happen again. I agreed it wouldn't and pulled the trigger. <laughs> Larry and I talked about this the other day. He agrees there's a problem. We'll go out tonight and begin to solve it together. And if there's any Larrys in the crowd, I'm sorry. Uh, last but not least, a uh, tentative first draft of a piece I was working on for a uh, charity fundraiser that I'm doing. Later, as the sunset fades on the living room wall, they sit in cold blue lightning and the warmth of the fire they've started. In accents reserved for foreign things, they speak of childhood sounds, the smell of sewing machines and Friday bars at closing time, the aftertaste of murdered love. Later, after the curtains turn down the street light, they write essays in tongues across foreign lands. They read each other in the braille of lovers. They search maps on which there are no monsters. <laughs> the fire burns long, but not forever. They sleep, pages in a book nestled beneath the covers as the ink dries on the chapter. Later. As the sunrise makes its way across them, they sit almost naked at the kitchen table, 
Sift the ashes with silence as well as words. Find the, esp the embers whispering of kindle and flame hot enough to weld too tightly, given laters. And later they will lose the vocabularies of the past. Burning letters cast in scripts they no longer recognize or need to remember against silent nights. Next. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's set lists or what it is. I, most, so I have no idea. There are numbers, but I, it is not. I'm like, did I just leave papers? But I did not. Was I didn't do it. But what I did do was release the brand new issues of CCND and Dr. Madrid magazine, and I think it's got this really cool cover on it because this is actually a photo from Eric Von Holzer, and it's this really awesome shot of this clay army in China somewhere. I don't know where. And it's really funny because I just, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to put this on the cover, definitely. And just in this past week, I saw them talking about